Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading your word. Uh, please teach us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Acts 13, verse 21. So Paul has stood up in the synagogue and he's beginning to preach. Uh, he's made a connection with them. Uh, he's talked about uh, their common past as uh, the people of Israel. And picking up in verse 21. Uh, talking about the nation of Israel. And afterward, they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Uh, now, God made a promise. Uh, part of the Davidic covenant would be, be that the son of David would never leave uh, from the throne. And that is going to be uh, fulfilled in, in one sense, is fulfilled right now in uh, Jesus Christ, but on earth has not yet been fulfilled. It will be fulfilled when Christ comes back for his second advent, when he returns and rules and reigns for a thousand years. Uh, the Bible prophesied, uh, there are those who think uh, that uh, the millennial reign is now, and since the time of Jesus, we've uh, had this wonderful time. Well, they haven't beat their swords into plowshares. We haven't had worldwide peace. Uh, also, the lion isn't laying down with the lamb. Uh, we haven't seen the desert bloom as a rose. All those things are going to happen when Christ uh, returns. But again, first will come uh, the rapture, a seven-year tribulation period. I believe many people will be fooled by the Antichrist thinking that he is the Messiah come to bring peace on earth. Uh, but then sudden destruction will, become, will come upon them, uh, that uh, the world will see the worst time uh, in its history in the time called the tribulation. Uh, but uh, Paul proclaims, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto us, unto Israel, a Savior, Jesus. So he names Jesus the name under heaven by which uh, there's no other name which you can be saved other than that, but through the name of Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem, their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Now, He's saying they never recognized him. The prophets spoke of him all the time. Uh, the law and the prophets always speak of Jesus Christ, but they couldn't recognize him. They missed him uh, because of their hardened hearts and their uh, stubborn wills. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. That's where the hope is. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men may say. And he was seen many days of them which came up from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from that from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Jesus' blood, the law of Moses, uh, the blood sacrifices that they did, uh, the blood of bulls and goats could only 
covered, but they couldn't do away with the sin. Jesus' blood was the atonement. It was the propitiation, the complete satisfaction of God uh, when the perfect Lamb of God was slain for the sins of the world. And we can have our sins completely removed and blotted out uh, so that God remembers them no more, but it's only through Jesus Christ. Verse 40, Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, and a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now notice, many times the Jews left, but the Gentiles wanted to receive it. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Isn't that wonderful? People came out in droves to hear the word. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against the things which were spoken of by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. You know, many times people are religious uh, because they want a position rather than want to give glory to God. And I think we all always want to be on the lookout for that because uh, we have uh, ultimately still a wicked heart and are still in our flesh. We want to always be pointing to the Savior, pointing to what he did. There's nothing that we can do to save. There's nothing that we can do other than just serve him and follow him and do what he commands. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles, to the Jew first, and then to the Gentiles. Uh, because they rejected it, it uh, salvation has come to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord God commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou should shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. Uh, always the religious want to fight against the grace of God. Uh, the gospel is simply this, that uh, Jesus Christ will forgive all your sins if you put your trust in him and what he did on the cross. He'll give you eternal life. Uh, but boy, the religious crowd doesn't want to believe that. They want to believe they can do something to earn it, that it's in part Jesus, but in part what they do as well. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I hope you're filled with joy today. May the Lord bless you as we end out another week.